Hey guys, uh, we are going to do something today a little different that I talked about in a previous video where I just chat and paint mushrooms. So I want to get more into doing scientific illustrations. So I am painting these mushrooms in a kind of scientific botanical, maybe a botanical illustration is the word I want. Um, and these specific mushrooms are called uh, Aphrodite's Perfume is the common name, I think. Although I only saw that in a couple places. Um, look, cat hair. I don't even... Oh, I had it and then I dropped it. So, it's like Aphrodidia Olida. Um, so... Aphrodite, obviously, is the goddess. And then Alita is because it's got a scent. And apparently, it smells like candy or bubblegum. Which is very fitting, because it's pink. As you will see. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you're looking at my hand. Uh, yeah, that is a burn. Um, and I definitely, I definitely did not burn myself at the gas station, reaching past three perfectly acceptable rows of chicken tenders to get to the chicken tenders that I wanted at the very back. Um, that didn't happen. I did not do that. So I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> Um, and if you're thinking, Annie, didn't you just say in your last video that you smashed up your knee falling on some gravel? I'm gonna plead the fifth there. I, I don't recall. I, yeah, that, that definitely, yeah, I have no memory of this, for sure. Oh my goodness. Anyways, so I'm a hot mess all the time. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I wish I knew how to do lives because I feel like this would be really fun to do live um, and chat with you guys while I'm trying to paint these. Maybe for the next one, I will figure out how to do a live stream. So if you guys think you would want to hang out with me while I paint and basically talk exactly like I do right now, um, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Because if you guys want me to do lives, I will put more effort into that. Into figuring out how to do that, I mean. Well, that looks really tragic. Jeez. Um, I definitely got that. Um, I probably rescued a cat from a... Uh, fire. Uh, like a house on fire. Yeah, or a tree. Maybe there was a burning tree with a cat stuck in it. And I was like, I better get that cat and burn myself. Definitely not. I uh, was definitely not rescuing chicken tenders from the very back of the rack. <laughs> Whatever. You guys like me anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> And if you, okay, like, everybody's got their weird thing, right? Like, once I had set my eyes on the perfect tender, chicken tender box, I had to get that one, okay? The rest of them would not do, all right? Um, so, like, I, I seriously, I, I burned myself, and I dropped the box, and I was, you know, mentally cursing myself for being an idiot. And then I was like, well, now I clearly have to have the box anyways. And yes, there were people around watching me do this, and um, it's fine. <laughs> ah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, nobody thinks that I'm a bigger idiot than me, so... <laughs> um, in other news... It has been unbelievably gorgeous out. 
it's only gonna last a few days so I'm trying to like enjoy it as much as possible like it has been 80 degrees which is obscenely nice for this time of year it should only be around 50 really <sighs> So I went for a walk today, um, and before you say anything, no, I did not fall again. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I did not fall again, and uh, that's good, because I need to let my leg heal before I fall again. <laughs> um, and I also, like... One of the things that I liked to do when I was just a wee bit younger like 10-ish years ago. Uh, one of the things that I like to do was get involved with roller derby. I was never good enough to actually make it onto a team, which is fine because it turns out I really don't like hitting people. <laughs> like that and like that's the thing that you need to like do in roller derby is like you need to be prepared to kind of smash people a little bit and I just ah, no yeah so then I was gonna get into refing for a while and then I just kind of moved out of town and didn't have anything like a roller derby uh league where I was living for a while so yeah I'm kind of wondering if I need to let this dry before I start messing around with it some more we're gonna let this dry I'm not going to make you watch that part. Okay, I have no patience. I don't want to let it dry. We're going to keep going. <laughs> so, I would really like to get back into skating this week. Or uh, this summer. Maybe not this week. Maybe I don't have to do all the things this week. Um, so, I really want to get back into skating. Because I really need to get more exercise. And I just really love skating. I think it's really fun. I would skate wearing all of my gear, like I'd have knee pads and wrist pads and elbow pads and a helmet on because I'm going to be 45 this year and also I fall just walking, so <laughs> I think I probably need to have protection on while I am skating. Um, and I, I mean like... I was getting fairly okay at it for a while, like, it wasn't, like, amazing, but, like, at least I could skate backwards, and I could skate fast, and I could do the cool crossover thing, and, you know, I could, I could, I could hold my own a little bit, and I probably would have made the team if I hadn't moved out of town, I think, but, yeah, I was kind of getting over it by then anyways, because I was like, man, I just... I don't want to hit people and also some of the people in roller derby are awesome and then like every other thing ever some of the people kind of ruin it for everybody else and like they get super bad attitudes and are really rude and yeah and I mean like part of it is like you you're joining some people join roller derby for fun right and, like, it's not like we had a professional league in the city that I live in. Um, but some people join, like, because they want to win. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, like, when you have those two different groups of people on the same team, it's really hard to, like, align the values of that team. <sighs> burned the heck out of me, Annie. Yeah, I know. I did. Okay, this time I'm really gonna let it dry. Okay, I'm gonna paint down here first. And then I'm gonna let it dry. I've been really... Ahem! Uh, that is not words. I've been reading this really great book about botanical illustration um, by a very fabulous artist whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce because I will just butcher it. So, <laughs> I will, however, link the book below 
I should really write down the things I need to link because this is going to be a very long video. And uh, if you're anything like me, like, I really intensely dislike when I'm like watching a video and somebody's like, I'll link that below. And then I go to look because I'm really interested in what they're saying. And there's nothing there. And then I'm like, oh, I can't believe you did that to me. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so even though this is going to be I don't want to say, we'll say botanical not scientific because I feel like a scientific illustration I would have actual mushrooms in front of me and be working directly from them as much as I could so let's we'll say a botanical illustration like this are you eating a plant stop eating the plant oh my cat's eating a plant I mean, she's fine. I don't keep poisonous plants in the house, but. <sighs> okay. What should I do next? Also, if I get distracted and forget what I'm talking about, I'm sure you won't be surprised. Oh, I know what I was talking about. So when you're doing botanical illustrations like this, you still need to keep the fundamentals in mind. Like you want to care about your composition. You want to care about your values um, and depth. And I might have to adjust this. It's really hard for me to tell like if you can see this or not like right now. I can see it from where I am sitting. But if you can't see it, that's going to be a very boring video for you. <laughs> Also, I'm going to try to make this the first video that I actually put chapters on, like intentional chapters. Because so when you get into long videos, I feel like people appreciate that even more than they usually do. Oh, I'm supposed to be talking. I forgot I was supposed to be talking. Um, it's two days later from my last part of the video, and you can see I still have a burn that definitely was not from reaching in to get chicken tenders. And, uh, but it's a lot better. It's not tender. So, like, if you're like, oh, that poor woman. I mean, first of all, clearly I did it to myself with my own, like, <laughs> ridiculousness. Um, and, yeah, second of all, it's definitely... It doesn't hurt to move it or anything. I put aloe on it and it's been fine. Um, and my knees are more annoying <laughs> than my hand. It's just that you can't see my knee and I'm not gonna show you because it's gross. Um, yeah, it's very scabbed over and like every time I bend my knee, it like wants to break open. Like it feels all like, Tight. Oh yeah, um, I have my window open and it's very windy out, so it's gonna get a little jiggly I think sometimes. So I'm gonna try to remember to hold the camera still when I need to, but, um, and I'm gonna assume that you guys know that the reason that I'm not gonna close my window is that it is fantastically nice outside, so that's just not happening. So my goal here is lots and lots of very thin layers. This is watercolor at its watercolorierist. Um, this is like one of those very traditional things to do with watercolor is very slowly build up layers. Um, it's what watercolor does really well because when you build up the layers really slowly like this, it gives your painting a lot of vibrancy without losing the like very interesting transparency that watercolors have. And of course, there is like a million really awesome ways to use watercolors. So I'm definitely not saying this is the only way. So I don't, I'm, I'm hoping that like in the video you'll be able to see that like I just have some very, very rough sketch lines for where I'm going to put this stuff. 
I think I might have chatted about this a bit already. Oops, sorry about the jigglies. Um, but, uh, for something that I'm not really using a reference for, I don't feel the need to have really precise pencil lines in to get started. Well, hello, helpful Tiny. Tiny, are you are you helping me? Is that what you're doing? Are you helping? Ma'am. <laughs> you helping? Got your little feet right on my mushroom painting? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Okay, try not to wreck stuff, okay? Look at your feet. No butt. There will be no butt on my painting. <laughs> no. Well, I am. I'm trying to work in a lot, a lot, a lot of really thin layers. I also want to get this watercolor done before I turn 7,000 years old. So that is definitely something I need to keep in mind as I'm working on this, especially because, like I said, it is not like a scientific illustration. It's really more of like a botanical illustration. I know that like the difference probably is like only in my head. <laughs> But in my head, I definitely want this to be more, I mean like while it will be recognizable as an Aphrodite mushroom, it, you know, wouldn't necessarily be a good idea to use this as a guide for hunting for Aphrodite mushrooms. If they're edible, I mean like, I really don't know. Where did that paint come from? I don't even know. I think stuff's blowing in off of the window. Because I had my windows replaced in the middle of winter, I have not had a chance to really like clean around where the construction was, so there's definitely a little bit of debris. That may or may not get cleaned up someday depending upon my life and how much I remember to do it and how much I care. Oh my goodness, it is so nice. The temperatures are supposed to start going down again. And I heard somebody mention snow. I wonder if you can hear the wind blowing past my phone right now. That'd be really funny. <laughs> So I heard somebody mention snow, but I don't think that's for my part of the state at least. You going away? Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. I'm hoping that even though the temperatures are going to start going a little bit down again, it's not going to be like, ugh, you know? It'll just be a little bit more springy, because honestly right now it's fairly summery out. Mm, I stopped talking again. I'm gonna have to cut some of this out because uh, I definitely cannot just keep up a running chat by myself. I'm a little bit surprised, actually. <laughs> I thought I would have no problem just sitting and talking to myself for several hours because honestly that's kind of what I do anyway, but... I think sometimes when I'm painting, I I tend to listen to audiobooks or watch videos on YouTube depending upon what I'm painting and how much I need to pay attention to it. And it 
So I definitely am not used to needing to continually think of new topics. Not that I necessarily like, that makes it sound like I am trying and I am not, clearly. <laughs> Like, I'm just kind of saying whatever comes to mind and uh, rolling with it. And like every once in a while, trying to make sure that I'm still slightly painting on camera, which I'm currently not. So I'll probably have to cut all that out. <laughs> The nice thing about painting mushrooms, okay, there's a lot of nice things about painting mushrooms, but the thing that I'm enjoying right now is that like every single mushroom looks a little bit different and like every single mushroom has such a variety of interesting colors in it, even the ones that you're like, oh, that's just like a little white button mushroom. Like, if you look at them, they all look just a little bit different, and they all have different shades of, like, white and cream. And so, like, painting this, I'm like, I want, like, pinks and oranges and tans. And it's really fun. Because, I mean, if you, I mean, like, the whole point of looking at references before you start an image like this is that when you're painting it, you can kind of make up your own thing while still retaining some accuracy to what it should really look like, which I think is really fun. Ooh, that's a lot of pink. That's a lot of pink. It was very red. Yeah, look at that. Very, very dark. Might be too early for that dark. But I do want to make sure I get dark, um, because if things turn out, this will be reproduced at a smaller size. I swear, like, if I ever actually get a contract for this thing that I'm working on, I will tell you guys about it. <laughs> I just don't have one yet, so I don't want to be like, oh, I'm working on this cool thing. And then it, like, falls through, and then I have to be sad. <laughs> I mean, I'll still be sad. But I will be less publicly sad and more privately sad. I was having a conversation with my friend the other day about kitties. Because, you know, I have three cats, so I end up talking about my cats a lot. I'm that person. And uh, I have no regrets about being that person. So we were talking about cats and I was telling him about how I hadn't slept the night before because my cats woke me up and one of them woke me up by like rubbing their cute little kitty whiskers on my face and that was really annoying. And uh, one of them woke me up by making biscuits, like crawling up on top of me and making some biscuits. And another one woke me up by just kind of pacing around me, like circling me on the bed <laughs> so it was a triple threat that day so that's very hard to ignore um and he was like I don't understand why anybody would ever have cats and I'm like I just like I live alone and uh my cats like keep me from getting bored and keep me from focusing on myself too much honestly like there are definitely days when I'm like, I just don't feel like functioning as a human and I have to because like my cats depend upon me. Like I need to, you know, not just like feed them and clean the litter box, but like I need to pet them and like pay attention to them and play with them. Like my cats have definitely saved me from myself a lot of times, so... I mean, they're definitely not for everybody, and that's fine, but yeah, I don't know what to do without them. <sighs> I mean, and they're expensive as all heck, honestly. Like, I have a lot of credit card bills because uh, my cat 
oh my gosh, the last one was went on a vacation and my cat decided not to drink water the whole time. I think I might have told you guys about this last year when it happened. Yeah, he just didn't drink water like the whole time we were gone. And then we get back and he's sick. And um, yeah, that went well. That was not cheap at all. Oof. Oh no, little drippies. That is not the end of the world at this stage. Yeah, I think we've made some progress. Am I still painting on the camera? Slightly. <laughs> My friend is coming over and we are gonna go get groceries. So I think I have to get going soon to do that. Um, I'm gonna bring this up more than once, possibly in this video, because I have no memory, especially from day to day. And I'm not recording this all on the same day because I just don't have time to finish an illustration in a single day right now. Uh, what was I even going to talk about? Hmm. Oh, so I started a Ko-fi account and I will, the link will be below, the link will be below in every video, but I will forget to talk about it basically all the time. So, and I have, I have three tiers right now. I have a Just Sticker tier and a Just Digital Art tier, which is like coloring book pages and reference photos. And then I have a Physical Rewards tier, and the Physical Rewards tier, like the upper one, is like a print and stickers. And then you also get the digital stuff too. So, and I have a couple people that have signed up for it. And, you know, it's, you know, friends of mine. Thank you guys. <laughs> but you guys should sign up for it because honestly, it's only going to get better. So, um, and also I have cats and they're expensive and I have a lot of bills this month. So if you guys want any of my stickers, the, for the, um, for the like top physical reward tier, the print that you get is only available on my Kofi. So like if whatever print I decide, I haven't actually done it this month yet. Um, whatever print I put out for my Kofi account is never ever going to be anywhere else. I've already decided that. The stickers I will put in my shop, which I have, um, it's usually in my description too. I just haven't updated it in forever because, yeah, I'm really bad at marketing, guys. Like, shout out in my comments if you are an artist and also really bad at marketing. So I think there's a lot of us. <laughs> Like, I just want to make art and somehow get paid for it. I don't want to put effort into getting paid. Oh, it's ridiculous. So what I'm doing right now is building up layers in a way that gives more depth to the curled over edge of the mushroom. This is gonna take a lot of layers, but that's fine. Honestly, it's super fun. I love working in watercolors, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it. It's definitely worth giving it a shot. A little bit of blue in the shadow. Yeah, I think so. So, I'm thinking when I have a little bit more free time, uh, which is like a fairy tale in which I have free time, uh, I'm going to try to take some botanical courses and I haven't decided yet if I want to try to take them there's a lot of artists online who do them well not a lot but there are some artists online who offer botanical courses like Billy Showell and um, Diane Sutherland I think she has courses yeah she does so yeah um, 
it would be awesome to take some online courses like that. But there's also like courses that I could take at like one of the colleges in Minnesota and I don't know if they do online courses or if that is all in person because that's too far away for me to do an in-person class no matter how much I would want to because I really like I really like in-person classes I did that workshop last spring slash summer And that was really fun. That was in person in Wisconsin. Oh my gosh, Wiggly. So, sitting down to work on this, and it's been a couple days. Um, you can tell because now I have like weird wrinkly skin here where there used to be what my friend calls my chicken tender burn. Because <laughs> my life is ridiculous and I'm a ridiculous human being. So let's do some painting. <laughs> I am using, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I'm using my Mission Gold single pigment set. It's what I use the most. So, uh, yeah, not surprising that I'm here again with my Mission Pigment set. Um, let's see. I want to start working on this. So, I do have a reference photo pulled up right now, and it is to help me get the light and shadow correct for the gills. And I am not putting it on screen because it's, like, not my picture, and it's not licensed, uh, what am I saying? It's not common use, so. But I'm also not copying it. Anyways. It's probably okay for me to put it up. I just I feel like that needs to be purplier. Yeah, we're gonna go with something a little more purpley. Hmm, that's closer, I think. Um. I have California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas stuck in my head, and I'm trying really hard not to hum it. I hum a lot. I sing a lot, actually. I don't hum very often. But I do sing a lot, and uh, it's really hard not to, and I know I can't. <laughs> but just so you know, that is the song stuck in my head. So that is my personal soundtrack for this part of the video. If you have a song stuck in your head, please comment below and let me know what it is. And then maybe I'll have that song stuck in my head instead of this one. Um, and I think part of the reason why I might have that song stuck in my head is because the weather turned and it went from like being 80 degrees and beautiful and basically like a summer day, not even spring, not even like coat weather, like it's shorts weather. And now it is snowing again. <laughs> Minnesota is beautiful, and I love it here, but occasionally the weather makes me question my sanity for staying here. <laughs> I was born here. You can't help where you're born, but I do sometimes wonder why I am still here. <laughs> but I also, I really do like it here. Um, and also my family's here, and all of my friends are here. And... I'm a person that doesn't like to move away from everybody that they know forever. I do like to take trips, though. So I do like to travel a lot. And this summer, we are going down to Florida, me and some friends of mine. Uh, and there's a board game convention thingy, and we're just going to hang out and play board games and probably spend some time at the beach. I am a big fan of road trips, so my friend and I are going to drive down. I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't been on a road trip in a very long time. Not like a super long one. I've done some shorter ones. So like 10 hours. <laughs> but this is like a 22 hour road trip. I 
The gills of a mushroom are so cool. I feel like that's getting a little too red. I really like how they seem to kind of reflect the color of the top of the mushroom, which makes sense. I mean, like, because the mushroom is kind of translucent, and so the color would come down. But I'm sure some of it is just how our human eye reads things. I am really trying hard not to sing the Mamas and the Papas. I have always really liked that song, though. It's a great song. If you don't know it, you should look it up. Hmm. I am reaching a point where I feel like I should be going in with some darker darks to set the mood for my other parts, like so that I have an idea of what I what I really want my darkest darks to look like before I start fussing too much with all this other stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go for some darks. I'm doing kind of a purpley bluey yellowy blend. So a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, oh and a little bit of red. I mean it kind of makes brown as you can see but it makes a very interesting brown. It feels like a winter's day. I'm just saying. I've got to do something to get this song stuck out of my head. It's hard to even talk about anything because like all I can think of is the song lyrics. So we will talk about why it's awesome to use single pigment colors. Uh, like I just said, I'm mixing together red and blue and for some reason also a purple even though I've already mixed red and blue in but I, I do what I want and you can't stop me uh, and then I also have yellow in there and so the nice thing about I don't like that color at all the nice thing about single pigment colors is I can mix all those together and not get a gross ugly mud I get kind of a color that I like whereas if you have um, paints that have multiple pigments in them, when you mix them together, you tend to not get the color that you're after as easily. In case you've ever been mixing something and been like, I don't understand what went wrong. I mean, that really could be what wrong. Well, well, eek, that could be what went wrong. It could be that you are mixing paints together that aren't single pigment colors. And that is, yeah. I need a bigger brush. What am I even doing? Ooh, look, I haven't even opened this one. Cat's tongue. This is a Rosemary and Co. Where am I? There I am. Oh, I have my, I have my um, focus locked, which is good. So this is a Rosemary and Co. brush, and they have really good brushes. I probably should be like I'm sure there's sizing on this brush that I should be rinsing out and I'm not don't tell anybody I am a really lazy artist just to be clear in case I have not made that clear already I am very lazy as an artist sometimes <laughs> there we go that's the color I want so Here's the big news in my life. I 
think I might have talked about my art crawl event that I had yesterday. And it went so well. Like, I was in the local ice cream shop and it was super busy even though it was getting chilly out already. It wasn't snowing yet, but it was rainy. Uh, yeah. So, went, went over there, spent about four hours there. And this is only like the second event I've done, like locally here, and I was worried that it was going to be like the last event I did where I kind of just sat in my booth and I did get to know other local artists, which was nice, but like I didn't really sell anything and like I didn't even really talk to like um, people, like non-vendor people about my art much. Um, and this time was totally different. People were really engaged and they really wanted to know about my art. I sold a couple of original paintings, which if you're an artist, like, I can't even tell you how big of a deal it is to sell original artwork to people who aren't your relatives and friends. <laughs> like, I mean, artists, like, we would not be able to survive, right, <laughs> when we're first starting out if we didn't have relatives and friends who were supportive of us. I honestly think that I just, I don't even know how I would be doing this right now if I didn't have somebody helping me, like, I mean, not just monetarily. I mean, the money is always nice when you're trying to buy art supplies and trying to, you know, build a business. But also it's just, it's really nice to like have somebody supportive of what you're doing. Um, I don't think I'm on the screen anymore. Let's back up a beat. Oh, oh yeah, I feel like we're making progress. Yeah, it's kind of nice to step back a little. A little bit more. There we go. Okay. All right. I don't think I want the shadow on that side. Well, that's too bad. I don't know if I can lift that out of there. I, yeah, we might just have set shadow on that side. <laughs> okay. That's fine. That's the shadow side. We're going with it. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate my friends and my family and how supportive they've been like doing commissions and getting prints and stickers and like signing up for my Kofi account and all of this stuff and that stuff is all super super awesome and really really supported like really really appreciated how much they support me just like with money but like honestly like I have so many people in my life who support me just like by telling me that they think I'm doing an awesome job and that they want me to keep going and they want to see my art and books and like those are the kind of um conversations that I was having yesterday with strangers and that's like that's so cool to hear guys like <laughs> it's I know that my art is good, but because I think my art is good doesn't mean it is good. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. It's really nice to have other people, like, come up and be like, uh, no, why aren't you doing kids books? Like, this is exactly what your art is meant for. And I'm like, okay. So, after those conversations, I, um... I got really like jazzed up. Uh, <laughs> I am really excited. I have um, a couple of book ideas that I definitely have backburnered, and I'm gonna unbackburner them and really start putting some effort into working on them again after I get finished and caught up with my current commissions that I have to finish. Um, but I am gonna start setting a time 
setting time aside every week to work on those. Um, I'm really torn. I promised myself I'd get a calendar out this year, and it is, you know, April. I mean, a 2024 calendar. Um, I really wanted to get a calendar out this year, and I don't think that's going to happen. Because it's April, and yeah. I just don't know that I want to put that much time into I have, like, I love my idea for my calendar, though, and I really want to do it someday, but, ugh. I... Ugh. Like, if I, if I don't have people that I know would buy it, like, I would hate to do all the art for it because it's a very specific theme. Um, I'd hate to do all the art for it and then, like, ugh, nobody sign Like, I'd have to kickstart it and, like, nobody would sign up for the Kickstarter and, like, then I'd just be like, well, technically I can just keep this art and try again next year, but, like... Man, nobody wants that. Like, nobody wants to be like, well, I failed at this Kickstarter. I'll just try that again. Like, I'd really rather wait until I felt like I had enough of a following that, like, I know people would want to back a Kickstarter. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Whereas, like, working on my book project, I feel like Even if nobody else, even if I try to kickstart it and it fails, I can still just be like, fine, I'll put it print on demand on Amazon. Like, I can do it. I'd prefer not to, but it is an option that is there for me. Here's some cat hair that is also there for me. I came home from church today and none of my cats came downstairs to say hello to me because they don't love me. <laughs> Oh, there's more cat hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I think... I don't know. Opinions? I seek your advice here if anybody is listening. Because I'm sure this is going to be a very long video. And I'm really not sure who all is going to actually watch this whole thing. I'd like to know if you think... Hey... You should uh, work on your book stuff and leave the calendar for later when you have more of a following. Um, or if you think I should work the calendar in and get it set up so we can have a 2024 Annie calendar, because that does sound cool, doesn't it? And yeah. And I am actually sitting on my desk right now. I realize I'm not painting because I started just chatting and I forgot I was supposed to be actually doing stuff. Um, I'm sitting at my desk right now looking at a calendar and the art on it, on, on this page anyways, is, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a turd, but I feel like my art is better than the art on this calendar. <laughs> and I'm not just saying like stylistically, that is not something I would paint. I am saying like... I I see that art and it is watercolor and I know the techniques used and I could do those techniques better than that. But it's like a one of those calendars that's like multiple artists contributed to it. So so it's only this page. This is the only one I've seen that I've been like, huh, that's not that great. I bet I could be getting into calendars. <laughs> But, you know, please translate that in the, in the kindest possible sense, because seriously, like, I am not trying to be a jerk. I really am not. Um, it is really hard to talk and concentrate on painting something that isn't really known to me. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to paint this part of a mushroom without it looking bad. And it is not easy to do that and remember that I'm supposed to talk. That said, I'm really enjoying doing, like, a kind of, it's not live, but more of a in-the-moment style. I really want that to be very obvious. Okay.
And as I get better at like painting while I'm talking, I would like to think that these videos would get less boring for you all. <laughs> Also, I appreciate you guys being here. I have no idea if anybody's going to even watch this whole thing, but I said that I would put some of these out, and some people were like, yay, do that. I love watching botanical art. So here I am. Um, we're going to do a ridiculously long video. I like that. Yes, I think I do. So, part of me being really jazzed up about getting stuff done this week and starting to work on my projects and really trying to do better at not just marketing, although I do need to work on that, um, but also just working on my personal projects instead of kind of bouncing all over the place, which is what I've kind of been doing. So, yeah. In order to, to like make that happen, I got up this morning. Yesterday was like a wash, right? So yesterday I did my event thing and then I went and played board games with my friends because I was way too excited to get anything done, which is fine because like it can't be all about work, right? Like sometimes you just need to relax with your friends. But this morning I was like, all right, let's crush it. So I got up this morning and I like, I have two separate calendars, like two separate day planners. And one of them is like all of the day-to-day -day stuff that I need to do, like my day job and any events that I have coming up. Like, hey, I have Bible study and like, D, D with my family uh and then like the other calendar is just studio stuff so i took my day-to-day -day calendar and i was like okay so i have to do my day job this day i have bible study i have trivia this night I have all of these things going on this week, and then I said, all right, all of that takes up this many hours of this day. Here are the remaining hours. Here's the portion of those remaining hours that I want to spend in my studio working on art stuff. I, like, I, I'm so proud of myself. I actually did this. <laughs> and so then I transferred all of that over to my studio thing like my little studio journal and I was like all right this day I have four hours that I can spend doing art stuff and here's my list of art stuff that I want to get accomplished this week so now I have every day of my week I know how many hours I have and I haven't gone in and like filled out what I want to do each day because I wanted to get through today first because today is like the end of last week on my calendar. So I didn't plan out today. I just knew I wanted to be working on this. I am still, despite all that, <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm going to have like a, a more rigorous upload schedule than I already have. Like I think I'm just going to keep getting stuff done as I get it done, and then I'll upload videos. Um, and honestly, if I'm going to be as busy as my schedule is looking like, like intentionally planned, right? Um, if I'm going to be that busy, I might be uploading more videos, which would be cool. Like, that'd be fun. I've always wanted to get more videos done in a week, but like my, the things that I work on tend to be very time intensive. So it's really hard for me to like, well, I'll just, you know, spend 10 hours working on this painting and then edit and upload a video and then spend 10 hours working on this other painting and then edit and upload that video. Like, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> so... But I do have other stuff that I'm going to work on, so 
stuff that is not necessarily going to take 10 hours, I hope. And like I said, I do have commissions still that I have to finish up. And those are usually less intense than some of my other things that I get caught up in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I want to work on the bottom a bit because I think that's going to be the darkest part is right around here at the base because it's probably going to be like dirt <laughs> and maybe some pine needles. Um, I do want to mention something that I think I might have mentioned before, and I know that Miranda Watson has brought it up in one of her videos where she reviews the Mission Gold single pigment set, and that is that the greens are a little lacking. Um, yeah, there's really only two greens, and... Yeah, I kind of am meh about them both. You can mix a lot, so like, but it is nice to have a convenience screen, but yeah. I am just not capable of talking through this whole video. There's just no way. So there's going to be pauses where I'm quiet. <laughs> And there's not going to be music, because I am not that person, I guess. I just... I'm trying to leave that little white gap right there. Because it helps differentiate whether or not it is accurate to what would happen in real life. In a picture, sometimes you tell a lie. <laughs> uh, so we want that little gap there to help differentiate between the two different stems of the mushrooms. It's a lie. <laughs> Though sometimes things like that do happen in real life just because of the way that light reflects. I wonder if you can even hear me. I'm kind of mumbling, but sometimes when I'm recording with my phone and talking at the same time, if I'm my usual self and I'm very loud, uh, it like buries the needle in the red as far as like my audio output. <laughs> so I'm trying to be a little bit mindful of that, but I know that I'm not great at being mindful. So uh, I'll probably just have to do a lot of audio editing. Okay. Let's get these caps done. Ooh. I have a different song stuck in my head now because I was watching reels for a while. <laughs> Just realized I'm mixing the wrong color. This is what happens when you get distracted easily. I want a little bit of orange here because they are kind of this nice... What is going on with you, brush? My goodness. They're kind of this nice, like, peachy pink. So a little bit of orange in spots, I think. And then some more pink in spots. Yeah, eventually I'm going to get faster at this, but today is not that day. So I'm hoping that after I do some of these, um, I can talk to a local kind of fine arts gallery because it'd be cool to like get them up on display. Um, whereas like I don't think that like my some galleries are not super awesome about thinking that illustrations like 
fantasy illustrations uh, deserve to be displayed in fine art galleries. I know that there are galleries that do. And maybe I shouldn't assume that the one in town here doesn't until I've actually gone to talk to them. Which I will. Eventually. Go talk to them. My list of things to do just got like a lot longer because I'm suddenly like, hey, how about I do all these 50 things? Instead of just like, you know, mentally wandering around and doing whatever. And there's like, do not mistake me. Like, if you are happy in the life that you are living and that life is wandering around and doing whatever, you do it. Like, I am not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm just telling you that I'm trying to change how I am living mine. Gosh, I really am liking the colors in here. Oh, I'm not zoomed in. I'm zoomed in too much again, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Where can you see? <laughs> okay, to like right here. I'm put this pencil right here so that I remember that when I am below this little paintbrush, you can't see. <laughs> <sighs> what do I want to do here, guys? Um, get some more red going on. I know this would probably be more interesting for you if I was mixing on the camera. But my palette is stinking huge, so. But next time I do one of these videos, I promise I will transfer paint to a smaller palette so I can mix on camera and you guys can see what I'm doing better. It's a learning process. So I don't want there to be brush strokes everywhere on this, so I am doing wet on wet right now. Or possibly wet in wet. However you'd like to say it. And I'm fine with there being hard edges. Like, I think hard edges along here is going to be kind of interesting looking. I'm fine with that. I don't like these brush strokes looking here. But I'm fine with, like, here you can see some hard edges. I think you can see some hard edges. Yeah. Okay, you can see that. And that's not the edge of the mushroom. The edge of the mushroom cap is down here. So, I'm leaving hard edges there because I think it's going to be more interesting. I'm going to do the same thing back here with a slightly different color. Because we want variation in color and tone. That is what makes mushroom caps interesting. It's what makes everything interesting, honestly. Um, unless you happen to really like uh, things consisting of one solid tone and color and value, <laughs> which some people do. So again, I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. Yeah, kind of liking how this is looking right now. So uh, how about fade out orange in this one? Maybe up here a bit. Yeah, a little doobie doobie of orange. Doobie doobie. Doobie doobie doobie. Hey, I said doobie doobie doobie, and I meant doobie doobie doobie. Not shooby doobie. Those are two different things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This is what happens when I'm like, I'm going to make this four hour long video and talk through the whole thing. Oh, it's a bad plan. You sound like an idiot when you talk all the time. Ah, well, that's fine. <laughs> I hope you guys like aren't expecting me to do really awesome things here. Like this is kind of like definitely like a video that you put on in the background and you do other stuff and then you look up once in a while and see what I've gotten up to in the last 10 minutes because it's usually interesting or maybe not interesting but at least it's different than it was 10 minutes ago the last time you looked okay 
So I definitely want more. orangey tones underneath these. Oh man. At least I know the words to the Mamas and the Papas song. I don't know the words to the song that's in my head now because I just saw it on a reel and now it's in my head. It's one of those piratey songs and it's really catchy and annoying and now I'm never going to get rid of the thing. I'd helmet for you, but uh, YouTube doesn't like that. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want this video to be taken down. <laughs> this is going to take me like five years to edit everything. Huh. That was very wet paint. Uh, one of the things about Mission Gold that makes painting with it hard is that it is very easy. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? It's very easy to reactivate. Uh, and so when it's wet and you reactivate it, it's like, woo, <laughs> like when it's damp at all. Yeah. I assume that I used that paint a little bit ago for something or other, and now it's very active. So I am painting wet on dry right here. Try to get some more vibrant colors down because I seem to be a little hesitant right now about colors and I'm not sure why. These are really cool looking mushrooms. I am really enjoying all the colors in here. And they really do like, I have seen, a, I've, um, I've looked at a lot of pictures of these now and they have a very interesting range of colors in the cap and in the gills and in the stem. And all mushrooms are kind of like that, but I've just never seen these before, so. Maybe it's extra interesting to me. Also, guys, if I repeat myself during this whole giant thing, I mean, try to take it with a grain of salt, because... There's just no way I'm going to remember all the things that I've said, and I am not actually going to listen to the entire audio of this thing again. I'm basically going to just try to edit chunks out, <laughs> kind of probably randomly, honestly. Like, uh, this part seems like it might be boring. Let's just take that out. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. It was looking so... I mean, like, I love pale stuff too, but like, this is... Not the place for it. Yeah. I mean, like, I was definitely getting nervous. And, uh, you gotta push past that at some point. So I want there to be a very definitive... Sorry. I'm talking to myself, even though I am recording this to show you guys. <laughs> I know that doesn't make sense, but I talk to myself in front of people a lot, so I guess it kind of makes sense, right? I keep forgetting how much watercolor lightens. Mm. 
when it dries. It's pretty significant. Like I'm like, oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I, oh, it's all gone. Okay. <laughs> put this here so once again I remember oh my gosh that's way up there hey guys why didn't you tell me I don't know what you're supposed to tell me but I feel like you should know I'm so glad that nobody's probably watching this in the middle <laughs> that's the uh, uh, that's what I'm going with is that there's probably nobody watching this so <laughs> So it doesn't matter. Not that I worry too much when there is somebody watching. It's not like I'm ever like, oh, I better uh, be careful of my editing and do everything really well because people are watching this. No, I've never. You guys have noticed I'm not super careful, I'm sure. <laughs> I am still on a no buy and I'm really finding myself wishing that I had light fast colored pencils because I kind of want to use colored pencils on this. But I don't have any light fast ones so that's not happening. Because yep, that would definitely violate my no buy. I mean like it's not like I need them. It would just be really helpful for getting some of the effects that I want that are harder to get and a lot more time consuming and that's the thing is like I'm trying not to spend a really really long time on these. So yeah, colored pencils would really help with that. <sighs> and now I know for next year. Like, now I know that, like, I probably want to invest in some light, fast colored pencils next year. And now I have the Ansco marching one by one stuck in my head. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm doing a mix of reds and blues along here. I'm trying to get kind of a rolled effect in some places and maybe just a bumpy effect in other places. So I'm gonna write this down because I think I've said it before, but I will try to leave some other, the other botanical artists. Yes, I definitely have said this before. Okay, I'm gonna leave some botanical artists that I've been watching on YouTube. There aren't a lot of them um, that do like very realistic, like long videos is what I'm looking for. Um, but there's a couple that I've found and if you have found other ones, like leave them in the comments so that we can all go and check them out. So the project that this is for, 
hopefully. Um, I've gotten some other examples of the art that's going to be in it. And so now I'm trying to not necessarily match my style to that style, but to try to make it um, harmonious. <laughs> So like my style, like when you look at the project as a whole, my pieces won't be like, oh, those don't belong there. It'll feel not necessarily like they're from the same artist, but like they are in the same family, if that makes sense, sort of. And I only have like another couple hours that I can work on this today because today is D&D &D day with the fam and I'm very excited to go do that. I was watching today um, on Denise Soden's channel that um, she was doing like swatches of a, an, an entire set of the stone ground gouache. So if you know Denise's channel, you might know the video I'm talking about. Um, and if you don't know Denise's channel, she's awesome. So you should go watch her videos. She, um, doing this whole long video of these, um, they're palletized, not palletized, oh my goodness. Um, they're dry gouache. Oh my goodness. Okay, I have to stop the video because I need to think for a second about what words are. Pan. The word I want is pan. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, that was seriously like five minutes of me saying the word palette over and over to myself again and then going, that is not the word, Annie. That palette. Okay, you don't want palette? How about palette? So the word I'm thinking of is pan. <laughs> so uh, she got this whole set of the stone ground pan, half pan um, gouache. And so, as I've mentioned before, I don't like using dry gouache. Like, I like to use gouache from the tubes. I'm the same way with watercolor. The only um, times I don't really is when I'm using my Mission Gold. I don't know why, but, like, I, I've... I mean, it helps that, like, I already had it panned out before I realized that I like to work from wet instead of dried um, watercolor. So I don't know how that would change things for me, but I, I suspect it would. Um, I wonder if I'd have a lot harder time working in such thin layers. Probably. Uh, so that's a good thing for me to keep in mind for future Annie. But I, uh, she was working, just swatching out these stone ground colors and they look super cool. And again, I'm still on a no-buy, so I'm not getting them, but they're, um, they look really neat and I would really like to try them someday. Um, and maybe even like compare those to, um, some of my other professional gouache that I have and like, cause clearly I don't have a way of getting those straight from the tube because they they pan them. I think it's a handmade company, I want to say. So they pan them themselves and I don't think they make them in tubes at all. But I would really like to try those and maybe compare them to some of my other professional gouache 
that um, comes from a tube. All right, that's starting to get closer to where I want it color-wise. So we'll let that dry and see if it actually dries to where I want it. <laughs> Probably not. Spoiler. Oh, cat hair, what are you doing here? Yeah, there's some color. Now I'm going to smoosh it all over the place, but... <laughs> Let's get in there. Let's get in closer to where I want it to be. I just love building up watercolor in layers like this. So I wonder how I seriously like I have no many. No, I have no many. I have no idea how many hours I have spent on this already and like how long this video is right now. But my goal is to be done today before I go to play D&D, so I should probably step it up a notch, maybe. So now everything has dried again. We're gonna come back in and start cooking butt, because I gotta get this done. Hmm. I want this weird purpley color, I think. I want to actually come in right here. Yeah, I like that. Just so you guys know, a lot of what I'm using on this, a lot of the paint I'm using is just palette mud. Like, I've used this palette enough over the last couple of years that it's, and I don't, I don't clean it. <laughs> so it's just gunk um, <laughs> that I'm using to paint this picture. <laughs> But I think I might have run out of things to say. I mean, like, that doesn't happen very often, but... When I was very young, I was very shy. Um, and it turns out that the reason I was shy is that, like, the kids in my class were kind of complete jerks to me. So I just got used to not talking to people as much. I mean, I had a couple friends that... You know, I actually liked and that spent time with me, but kind of got used to not talking a lot around people in public. I have since gotten over that. <laughs> I think I'll cut this little shadow thing off right around here. So we'll go up to around here-ish, making these darker, trying to make more of a shadowy look around here. It's definitely helping me be braver with this mushroom that I have gotten to see more of the art that's being used in this project. And as soon as I have a contract, I may have mentioned this, but as soon as I've actually signed something that says I'm working on this and I get the all clear, I will happily tell you about it because I'm very excited about it and I think it's going to be really, really cool. Some cat hairs are invisible until you pick them up with your brush. So I'm trying to leave lighter spots in the cap and lighter spots along this edge here. So far I've remembered that I'm trying to do that. And we're getting close to, closer to the end at least. I 
And I know I work in gouache too, so like if I really wanted to, I could go back in with white gouache. But it's not the same. <laughs> and it doesn't look the same. Maybe if I was like a gouache master, I could make it look the same, but I am not. So I am leaving light spots. But I think there's just a difference between transparent paint and opaque paint. <laughs> And I love gouache, so it's definitely not that I don't like it. Another hair. So, if you are sticking around right now, I'd like to know if you feel like this video was worth it, or if I should do it differently in the future. I know people are probably going to say that they want music if I'm not talking, but that's never been, I mean, like, I think I have exactly one video that has music in it. And people were really split about whether they liked it or not. And, uh, yeah. When I watch videos with music in it, it tends to be more distracting than helpful. And part of that is that, like, I always... I feel like music um, gets too loud really easily, whereas talking um, doesn't. Like, I would rather have to turn up my audio when I'm watching somebody else's video, right? I'd rather have to turn up the speakers than turn up the volume. That's what I'm trying to say. I'd rather have to turn up the volume to hear somebody speak than to like get blown away by really, really loud music, which is like how it always is. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's very possible that I just don't like loud music like and other people do. <laughs> We are getting, we're making a lot of really good progress. I'm trying to figure out what I want to be working on next. There, I like that better. And I just want a little bit in the back of light, yellowy. And I will watch videos that are silent, but I have to be able to just focus on that and watch them and usually when I'm watching videos I'm doing something more like this like I'm painting and I just want a video on in the background to keep me company live streams are awesome for that in some ways because uh, then I can like in some ways, um, if I'm watching a live stream, like when Moni D Major does her live streams, and I'm like, hey, chat, 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 and uh, then I don't get anything done. <laughs> Oops, that's very blue. So we'll just blend it out, and it'll be like nothing happened. And now I know to beware of that part of my palette. Beware. <sighs> my furnace just kicked back on and reminded me that I had to turn my furnace back on. I had it off because it was 80 and I was like, okay. I mean, not that I was expecting it to stay 80 because it is April in Minnesota. But I was not expecting more snow. And I will probably turn it on, turn it off again after tomorrow. It'll be below freezing at night, but it will be above freezing during the day. And that's kind of all I ask for when I turn my furnace off. 
I don't mind like a few days in the spring and the fall when I'm cold and I have to layer up in my house. The cats get extra cuddly for a few days. <laughs> Mm. And I just got that song from Attack on Titan stuck in my head. You guys are lucky you don't live with me. My cats get to hear me sing all of these songs and more. Only, like, when I sing them, I stick the word cat in there instead of whatever the lyrics actually are. <laughs> I know other people do this as well, so, you know. We have, like, a club. A club of crazy cat people. Singing really awful songs to our cats. So it kind of blurred these gills a bit too much when I was putting in some other layers. So I'm trying to go back and redefine them a bit. One of the weird things about botanical art are is that um, there's really no like focus. Like when you're making an illustration, you want to be telling a story, you want to have a clear focus point. But like when you're doing botanicals, you kind of just want to try to accurately represent what you're painting. And you still have to worry about composition and depth and all of the other things. But at least in my mind, all of the parts of a botanical illustration are going to be equally detailed. and equally rendered. And I think that's part of why I have felt drawn to botanical illustrations lately, is I think that sounds really fun to just make a very detailed, highly rendered illustration. And I mean, there's nothing that would stop me from doing that in all of my art if I want to. Um, I just think it's less effective as a storytelling device. Than leaving yourself a focal point. You know, it's really interesting as I'm saying this like, I've learned a lot in the last few years, and I think I tend to really undervalue that. Like, not everybody knows those things, and I kind of feel like I've gotten to the point where they're obvious, and uh, I forget that they're not obvious to everybody, and I, it's okay to talk about them. Starting to really like this spot right there. <sighs> and it's okay to ask questions. Um, it's okay for me to not know things. It's okay for you to not know things. It's okay to ask questions regardless of how long you've been doing whatever you're doing. Whatever you're asking questions about, it's not dumb to not know any everything even when you're an expert 
it's okay to question. In fact, I think it's more likely um, if you are a expert in a field and you're confident in your expertise, if somebody brings up something and you don't know the answer, I think as you get more comfortable having expertise, you're more comfortable saying, I, I don't know the answer to that. Let's find it. That's, I think that's a healthy thing to do, so. My chair is very squeaky. This is not a nice chair that I'm sitting on. This is, um, like, you know those, like, Formica tables that you see sometimes that are from the 70s and, like, some people super love them and think they're amazing. And some people are like, I'm going to put this out by the curb. <laughs> I hope somebody takes it. So I found one of those sets that had a table and four chairs out by the curb of the neighbor's house. <laughs> and I am not one of those people who would have paid a lot of money for it. But I definitely was like, ooh, that's cool. So the table's in my basement, and it is what I put my mat cutting stuff on right now. Actually, right now I think it just has a pile of paint buckets on it, but eventually... Eventually it might have my mat cutting stuff on it, or my mat cutting stuff will move up stairs. I don't know. I'm constantly like shifting things around and trying to make up my mind about how I want my house to be set up. All right, I think I have everything fixed now. I think I need to be more obvious with shadows in here. And as I'm putting on this wash, which is what I'm doing, is putting on a light blue wash, um, I'm still moving in the direction of the gills because I don't want to lose that directionality. See, I know things. I say to myself, I don't think you doubt me, my art tube friends. Uh, I think I doubt myself too much. Definitely do not feel like I give myself enough credit for a lot of things, honestly, and I think a lot of people fall into that trap. I feel like people don't give themselves enough credit, and they don't give themselves enough time to like learn and change and grow. <sighs> it's rough being a people. Rough being a person, not easy. I like it though. It's better than the alternatives, I guess. I wonder where I'm going with this. Yeah, that definitely needed to be all in the shade. I think I was leaving it too lit up still. So I think I have it in my head. They are on a pine floor, because I think that is one of the places that they grow. Um, they also grow in like mossy areas, so I'm gonna do some moss, I think. Can you guys see this? Still trying to keep this area on this mushroom. I 
Like I want that to be a very clear line there. And I remembered so far. Hmm. Yeah, I'm really starting to like this. Oh, it's such a good idea to not just like hone in on one part of your painting and work on that to the exclusion of everything else. But sometimes it just happens and I feel like that's what happened with this painting. And so I was like starting to really not necessarily like it. And now that I've started working on other parts, I'm like, oh, okay, no, I... It's going to be fine. <laughs> I'm glad that I don't usually... Oh my goodness, it's a lot of water. Um, I'm glad that I don't usually do my videos like this because it's really hard. Someday I'm going to live stream and I'm going to realize that this is easy compared to live streaming. <laughs> Where I have to pay attention to what people might be commenting and then also pay attention to my painting and also be talking. It sounds like a lot of work. Sounds very complicated. Oh my gosh, it's snowing so much right now. <sighs> but none of it is sticking. I don't even think it's... When I got up to go to church this morning... When I left for church this morning, I should say. Um, it definitely had stuck like to my car. Like There's a little bit that I had to not scrape off because it's not that cold. Uh, thankfully. Um, but a little bit that I had to, like, hit with the windshield wipers. Let's see. Let's do some browns. Ugh. <laughs> I was like, I just want a tiny little bit of water. That didn't happen. I got a lot of water. So, from what I have noticed, you can usually see these little bits at the bottom of mushrooms. Where they have come up through the dirt and they're still dirt clinging to them. It's kind of cool. I'm trying to remember to add little details like that. And I've noticed that other botanical illustrators seem to add details like that to their mushrooms too. So. It definitely helps to be able to see other people's work. Never be afraid of looking at what other people do. That doesn't mean you should copy them. It's like I'm not like copying. I'm like, okay. Clearly other people think that mushrooms have dirt on them. So I'm like, it's an acceptable thing in the botanical illustration community to add these little clumps of dirt to the mushrooms. And it's an acceptable thing to do a certain kind of illustration where it's not just the mushroom, it's the mushroom and some of the surrounding environment instead of, yeah, just the mushroom. And again, I think if this was a more scientific illustration, I wouldn't necessarily include some of this stuff. I would probably try not to actually include any other environment other than the mushroom itself, which would probably still have dirt on it, just because I feel like that is a part of the mushroom life cycle, is having dirt on it all the darn time. <laughs> so I started working on a new illustration that I want to do. I don't know when I'm going to do this because clearly like I have 
mentioned, I have literally no time to do anything ever, not even all the things that I am trying to get done already. But I also think that I need to remember to keep time aside to not just work on like passion projects, but to work on things for fun. So like little one-off things that aren't just like, this is something that I'm gonna do 50 illustrations for and spend the next year of my life trying to finish it. Like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of pressure. Like sometimes I just really need to be able to just make fun things. Um, so I have an illustration that I wanna do um, I saw somebody's pen and ink drawing of an owl, and something about that illustration made me want to make like a fantasy owl wearing a suit standing in the woods. So while I was in between talking to people yesterday at the art crawl, kitty, um, I started working on this illustration. And I mean, it's it was in my sketchbook and not super fancy, but it is going to be the finalized illustration that I transfer over to the wood panel I'm going to paint on. I think I'll do it in acrylic, acrylic wash. And, uh, yeah, people seem to really like it, and I'm really excited to try it. I try to get started on it, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen this week, sadly. I haven't forgotten that I want to, that I said to uh, do my um, space crocagator, because I had a couple people say that that sounded fun. So I uh, also have been working on a sketch for my space crocagator, and I think I have some really fun ideas for that, um, that I will also do, maybe I do want some green on this side, it's looking really uneven, um, that I will also do in acrylic gouache. It's so... Like, when I think you, <laughs> I think when you learn how to paint, it's good for you to take the time to try to master. I mean, I'm going to use kind of air quotes here, master. Um, to get really good and really understand one medium before you move on to something else. But I don't think you have to stick with one thing forever. And I think working in several different mediums can actually really um, help you get even better at your first one. And I think it can help you get over art block. And I think it can really inspire you. But I do think it's a lot easier to learn the fundamentals if you're only focusing on one thing. Okay, I like that. I like the little green clump. I don't want to mess with it anymore. I might make it a little darker later, but that's it. And then nothing else over there. Stop that any. Okay. I think this might need a little darker. I need to get a little darker here. And then I think I need to put in some more defined mossy bits here. And then I just want like a couple of like pine needles in here somewhere. These little grumps. Grumps. We're just going to go with that. These little grumps of ferns are bluer than these little grumps of ferns. And that is because I want these little grumps of ferns, moss, whatever they are, these little green lumps, I want them to come forward. I want those to look more in the background. So foreground grumps, less blue, more yellow. All right, do I want pine needles or do I want to just say this is good and not mess it up? I'm gonna try to sketch some in and see if I like having long pointy bits coming out of this. I think I do. So they're gonna be dead pine needles. So they're gonna be kind of orangey. 
And that's one of the reasons that I want them is it kind of pulls that orangey pinky color down through the whole painting leads your eye back up through it so you do think about this stuff all right I'm full of lies <laughs> then I'm just gonna try am I even on screen yes I am good to just paint mm, I think I want this one to be right here Why would I put it where I drew it? Why would I do that? Okay. And they usually have like a darker brown bit on the top. But I don't think I want, I think I want that to be the end of them. So I'll just make a kind of a shadow underneath. I might have to cover that bit up because it got chubby. I mean, it's kind of one of the reasons I think I'll have this be the thick end. It's one of the reasons why I really like making YouTube videos like this where I just show that I make mistakes because I feel like so many people get really stressed and don't want to make art because they don't want to make mistakes or they start making art and then they don't want to finish because they don't want to make mistakes. And uh, you just got to channel your inner Bob Ross, my friends, and make those mistakes. I'm going to make this a two prongy one. Just have a little No, I think it looks like a pine needle. Oh dear, that's a tangent. Let's fix that. So, I'll just explain what I'm doing in case you don't know what a tangent is. You see where this line coming down here intersects with this line here? And this line right there was also intersecting there. Yeah, human eye does not like it when that happens. No, it's fine. We can just shift this line a little tiny bit. And it'll be fine. But it's something that you should keep your eyes out for. Because it... It's one of those things that... It might be hard for you to understand why you're looking at your image and it doesn't seem pleasant to look at but yeah our brains don't like it when a lot of things intersect like that hmm. i can feel myself being indecisive and i hate it when i do that like i need to be able to make clear decisions while i'm doing this part I do want to make these more clearly gills. Like I think right now they're not super obviously gills. Oh, hello. 
Hello. Yes, thank you. Thank you for helping. I really need to clean my desk. There's definitely not enough space here <laughs> for me. Not just because I my cats like to take over everything, but like my art supplies like to take over everything. And now I have plants that are also sitting here taking over everything. <sighs> it's always an interesting, don't you dare claw me. It's always an interesting experience to try to paint with a cat on my shoulder. I mean, it's not just like I'm like literally holding her up with one hand. Oh, but sometimes she gets really excited about something and just claws the everlasting snot out of me. And I never see it coming. It's very hard to not, like, just all over my paper when my cat very unexpectedly claws the snot out of me. We need some more defined shadows along farther down. So right now it looks like a really narrow cap and it has a really wide cap. I'm trying to mix blue. That's obviously a blue, but isn't super vibrantly blue. So a very subtle blue. And I want it to be dark enough that it's still obviously a shadow. I'm really torn about this. No. Nope. If it's bothering me that much, it needs to be fixed. So I want to put some light peachy-ish color on that side. And I got it wet first so that I didn't just hammer it with a really dark color. Oh yeah, I like that a lot better. We'll add something similar right here. Okay, so I keep forgetting what I'm doing <laughs> and then I accidentally like record a whole bunch of stuff without uh, being in frame. So we're just going to record like this for the rest of the process. And really all I'm doing is putting in some washes because I feel like it needed more contrast. But now I feel like I've lost some of like the vibrancy that it had. I don't know. And it still needs more contrast in some places, I think. Like, uh, mm, I don't know. On the other hand, I'm a little worried that I'm going to keep going because I want to keep working on it and I'll just mess it up. <laughs> so I should probably just stop soon. I just really feel like I should have more shadow farther down here. Like if the shadow was angled more like that there and more like that there. I feel like it would give more depth. Okay, we're gonna try that. Okay, and then I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna stop messing with it. So I'm gonna mix up a kind of purpley blue brown color. Again, I'm sorry that, like, I'm mixing off screen. I promise next time I will be mixing on screen more so you guys can see what I'm doing. Something looked better when I was standing up. Okay. Yeah, 
that needed more shadows. Okay. And of course, because I'm me, I did not come close to mixing up enough paint. Mm -hmm. That was a happy sigh of painting, not a frustrated sigh of me being indecisive again. Yep, yeah, nope, I needed that. It looks a lot better. So I want you guys to know that the voice in my head that's telling me I need to stop before I ruin this is getting louder. <laughs> okay. All right. So if I saw this illustration in a book, I'd think it was cool. So I'm going to stop now. <sighs> Here, let's give you guys some closer views. Alrighty. Here is our finished mushrooms. I was going to say here is our fin finished illustration. And then I changed to mushroom and now the grammar is all wonky. And I'm not going back. Uh, yeah. Love to hear if you are still watching this, because I'm sure it's going to be really long. Uh, and if you think there's something I messed up, if you think there's something you would have done differently. Um, and yeah, drop the names of botanical illustrators in the comments for everybody, including myself. Uh, this is something that I'm just starting to do, so yeah, it's really fun. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. If you watched all the way to the end, <laughs> I'd be really impressed. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys soon. I have a lot of videos coming up, so I'm hoping to get more out in the near future, and uh, maybe even this week again. Alright, alright. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!